For those of you that didn't know this, I lived in Texas for three years. More specifically, Arlington, Texas, and even more specifically, Grand Prairie, Texas. Grand Prairie was within pissing distance of Arlington, so I usually just say Arlington. And that's where everything is anyway when you're in that area, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Arlington, then you got Fort Worth and Dallas. But I lived in Arlington, Texas. Not Arlen. Arlen is a fictional town from King of the Hill, just so you guys don't start saying that. But it may shock you to hear that I enjoyed my time in Texas. And if I could move back there, I probably would in a heartbeat because I had a lot of good times in Texas. Met a lot of good people, did a lot of good, fun, awesome things. Had some bad times just like you will anywhere else. Um, I didn't necessarily care for the mentality of a lot of Texans. They're, they're hyper-conservatism, hyper-Christianity, hyper this, hyper that. The backwards thinking, the backwards logic. But if I could go back, I probably would. And since I was in Arlington, the ballpark in Arlington is in Arlington. And that is where the Texas Rangers play. They became my second favorite baseball team. Not just because of proximity, but mostly because I like the atmosphere. Yeah, okay, fine, mostly for proximity. But I went to a few Texas Ranger games, and I learned very quickly that Texas is not just a football state. They are a pretty good baseball state, especially in that area. I like the attitude of the fans, their energy. I like the atmosphere of the baseball, of the, of the, of the park, and all that stuff. And I became a Texas Rangers fan. And I kept hearing the name Josh Hamilton when I was in Texas and going to the ball games and watching the, the local news, listening to the local sports radio. Josh Hamilton, Josh Hamilton. Fans loved Josh Hamilton. I say loved for a reason. More on that later. They loved him because they could relate to him. Here's a guy who, who went through alcohol and drug addiction and got clean through Jesus. Texans love their Jesus. When somebody gets clean and they praise Jesus' name and say his name every probably 300 times in a 10-minute conversation, he's just their kind of guy. And he happened to be a good baseball player. Kind of streaky, especially toward the end, but he happened to be a good baseball player. And people related with that aspect of him, his getting clean and sober. But now, Josh Hamilton is with the Los Angeles Angels. For those of you that are casual watchers of baseball, let me tell you what he did in the very last game of the season last year. The Texas Rangers were in a close NL West race with the Oakland Athletics. I forget who did it, but he hit a pop fly to center field. All Josh Hamilton had to do was put a good effort and run after the ball and catch the thing in his glove. What did he do? He lazily trotted after the ball and he missed it and it dropped out of his glove. And he cost him the game and he cost him the NL West. And fans let him have it. They let him have it big time. Yes, he was their Jesus hero, but he was also the guy that put in a piss poor effort to catch a can of corn, a routine fly fucking ball. Cost him the NL West. So, Josh Hamilton signs with the Los Angeles Angels after doing much deliberation with Jesus Christ, of course, in his words. He signed with the Los Angeles Angels, and he immediately started trashing Texas, saying they weren't a real baseball town, and saying he spoiled them, and they still treated him like garbage later on. He spoiled them. His talent rained down upon them, and, he, and they were spoiled. Now, as somebody who considers himself a Texas Rangers fan, and as somebody who lived close enough to all the action, I have to say, fuck you, Josh Hamilton. Fuck you. Number one, from what I personally saw, and you probably did too, the Ranger, Texas Ranger fans are real baseball fans. They take their baseball seriously. So seriously that they can call you out on your bullshit where you say you spoil them, and the last image they have of you is you dropping the ball that cost them the NL West. And then, after you pull an 0 for 0 for fucking 4, and they hand you your ass on a silver platter with all the trimmings, your homecoming to Texas, what do you say? You compare yourself to Jesus. Somebody in the clubhouse, this is what he said in the press conference, somebody said, where was Jesus God after the most? His hometown. Well, baseball-wise, I consider this my hometown. And you have the audacity, the outright temerity to compare yourself to Jesus? I think a lot of Texas Ranger fans would probably tell you that Jesus would not drop such a routine ball. Jesus would not put in such a piss poor fucking effort. And he sure as hell would not turn around and trash the team that gave him his start and gave him an opportunity to come back after he fucked up his life with drugs and alcohol. He wouldn't do that. But you still compare yourself to him after all of that and trash the team that gave you a ch the chance and the opportunity. And you know what? You still have fans. You still have people that believe in you. Even after putting in that piss poor effort, 
to leave them with that bitter taste in their mouths, you still have people that believe in you. You pissed all over them. You've been trashing them any fucking chance you could get. So I'm going to stand up for my Texas Ranger fan brethren and say, fuck you, Josh Hamilton. Fuck you for what you left them with. Fuck you for what you're saying to them. And fuck you for the pile of shit that you are now. All you have now is this. And I really hope that your career goes straight down the toilet. I'm glad. Okay, you can call me bitter because I'm an atheist and I think that, no, it has nothing to do with that at all. I hate it when anybody spews about Jesus as much as he does. If Jesus really got you clean and sober, fine, go ahead. But don't compare yourself to him like that. People see through bullshit. They see straight through bullshit. And the ultimate bullshit was you costing them the playoffs. A shot at the playoffs. They see it, they smell it, they detect it, and they avoid it. And they're avoiding you, Josh Hamilton. And they, just like me, are saying, fuck you and everything you're worth right now. Which is a good chunk of change. Just like what Jesus had in store for you, right? Well, let me tell you this. What are you going to do when you start going downhill in Los Angeles? Right with Albert Pujols, who has cobwebs coming off of him, huh? What are you going to do when you start going downhill there? What are you going to do when some 20-year-old, Mike Trout, starts outperforming you? What are you going to do? Are you going to turn to Jesus then? you still going to browbeat Texas Ranger fans? What are you going to do, Josh? You're going to do what every other washed-up baseball player does. You're going to crawl in the corner, you're going to cry, and you're going to deserve every last bit of, of sadness that comes over your body. Because of how much of a sanctimonious lowlife you have become. And then maybe when you crawl back to the Texas Rangers. Or even more funny, the Detroit Tigers. When you crawl back and try to get an opportunity for them. When your average is in the toilet. Your on-base percentage is on the toilet. Your war is in the negatives. And they say, sorry. <laughs> we have no room for you here. It'll just be fitting. But here's the thing, Josh. There's a thing called that Texas hospitality. That does actually exist. And I experienced it. They, even after you did that shit to them, they would probably still take you in with arms wide open. God, I hope that makes you feel like shit. After you get done counting the money that Jesus is helping you count, right? Prick. Josh Hamilton sucks, and I hope his career goes in the toilet.